The films of director Mike Lee are never slave to the script. Rather, they are born of months of improvisations and rehearsals with his actors. His movies like Naked and Life is Sweet are idiosyncratic, controversial, and often funny explorations of the human condition. Secret and Lies, his latest film, is about a struggling, working-class English woman who was reunited with the daughter she gave away at infancy. It won both the Palme d'Or and the Best Actress Awards at this year's Cannes Film Festival. Joining me now, actress Marianne Jean-Baptiste, Brenda Blethyn, who won the Best Actress Award, and director Mike Lee. I am pleased to have each of you here. Nice to be here. You said a few minutes ago that this is quite different than making the film. And a damn sight easier. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get how, that. Right, Let's, how so? Well, here we are. Here we are. There's no pressure. No. I mean, we can just All the talk pressure's about, on me. Yeah, the pressure's on you. We can just talk about it. Yeah. You know, we didn't have to get out of bed at fantastically early to come here. Yeah. See, but what's so <laughs> hard about making a film? It's just tough. I mean, you what's know, we, tough? we confront ourselves and we really, we you know, we yak... When we made this film, Secrets and Lies, we dragged it out of ourselves, didn't we? We, we actually... Yeah, it's very hard work. You know, this is not the first film of his you've been in. No, I've done, this is the second. Yeah. What is it that makes him different as a director? And how does he make you deal with the shaping of the character? Well, because as an actor, you create an entire person. It's so much rewarding, more rewarding at the end of it. Working with Mike Lee, he gives you a greater arena to be more daring, to be and um, to delve deeper into the character. And you've also got the time to do it because it's done chronologically. You 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 find a starting point with Mike um, in the early stages of uh, of working, and then you create an entire character through infancy and childhood to the present time. Until he and along the way, there he would um, puts the actor in an, uh, to in an improvisation with other actors and. But it's so liberating because the actor is only responsible for one person, the person that they're creating. You don't have to be interesting, you don't have to be funny or entertaining, you just have to be truthful to that one person. A and you, together with him, find that person. Absolutely. Create that person. Yeah. yeah. It's not created by script. It's not created by the fact that you have... Hmm? No. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. That's absolutely Tell me about your character. Tell me about Hortense. What about her? Well, I mean... Who, what did you create? And how did this character come into being for you that we see on screen in a moment? Well, just as Brenda explained it, really, I mean, just months and months of painstaking detail. I mean... What kind of detail? I mean, what school she went to, what subject... You're thinking it out. you yeah, figured it out. Yeah, we discuss it. You discuss it. We discuss it. We and invent then. a character. I work separately with each actor. Yeah, and, and, and none of them know what's happening to the other. No. no. Absolutely nothing. And they, uh, that's, that is a practical necessity. Why? Because what we're really doing is replicating real life. I mean, you know, I mean, here are we having this conversation, and I know uh, not very much about you. You know a little bit more about me. Um, but built into the relationship that we are having at this moment are the tensions of the fact that we, d we only know as much as we know, mm -hmm. that we perceive each other just from uh, our knowledge and our ignorance. Yeah, I've seen your films, I've read about you, you've watched me work for the last... Uh, that's right. But I mean, minutes. the point is that, that um, by each actor only knowing as much as his or her character would know, it means that he or she is liberated from being inhibited or anticipating or having an overview in other words, it's like real it life. It comes out of them yeah, rather than having real. been come down upon That's them. That's right, yeah. Right? Yeah. Tell the story. This story is about what? Um, I'd say it's about a young woman who goes in search of her birth mother. And she's adopted. She's, she's adopted, right. yeah. young adopted woman who goes in search of her birth mother and finds her and the relationship that sort of ensues from that. I mean, there are other elements. I mean, it's about so many different things, but... She is black. That's right. Her mother is white. Uh-huh. Mr. Lee, the director of this film, did not tell you that the mother was white. No. And did not tell <laughs> you that this daughter 
and all these mm. secrets and lies were about. Cynthia did not see her baby at, at the birth. She was too traumatized by the whole event. She, um, but we, but mm. we, it must be said, we decide, we, yes, at the appropriate stage of yeah. this development, we made that decision. Right, right. Yeah. We had also made a decision uh, separately, around, dealing with the same period of, you know, this, around that year or so, we had made a decision that she had had a fleeting moment with a black guy. Of course we made that decision. I, I can't arbitrarily decide that she has, she's had a, a, um, a black baby. Without, without having had yeah. some kind of So we'd made that decision, but for reasons that are t told in the story, she was not, did not know that this baby was the result of that um, moment, that coming together with this guy. She thought it was another, she thought it was a result of another in your words, what is Secrets and Lies about? It's about a lot of things, as Marianne says. It's about identity. It's about the need to know who we are. It's about the need to know what we are and wh where we fit in. The search for roots. Yeah, the, the, need, the need to connect and to be part of something and to, to share and care and all of those things. It's about the way we perceive ourselves and the way we perceive other, each other and the way we want other people to perceive us. So that, I mean, the fact that um, y you not only have this central um, uh, narrative, but also, I mean, Cynthia's um, brother, Morris, played by Timothy Spall, is um, a photographer. And there's a whole, air, whole sort of other strand of the film, which is all about people having their photographs taken and people, you know, wanting to be presented in a in an idealized way and somebody who wants to be presented in a very unidealized way to do with all of it, to do mm. uh, with perception of ourselves and I images of ourselves and all of those things. It's also to do with parents and kids, children. It's to do with uh, the way that, you know, you, you want to know who your parents are, obviously, but you also you have kids and your kids don't necessarily, I mean, most people's kids don't turn into, certainly your kids don't turn into a, into a reproduction of you. They, they're, they're quite other people and they're quite unpredictable. And here's a case where, you know, Cynthia has no idea about this child. The child is an abstraction, a vague notion, until the child materializes and is a bundle of surprises. Let me just get this straight. On the set, mm -hmm. when she walked in, you did not know who she was. At the Cynthia had gone in the original improvisation right. to meet Hortense. She'd only spoken to her on the phone. She had no idea what she looked like. And when H Hortense, played by Marianne, right. approached Cynthia... Cynthia, played by you. Yeah. Um, we must always re refer, um, refer to the person in the third person. Right. And um, I th when, when Hortense said, are you Cynthia, and Cynthia says, yes, how do you know? It's a genuine question, because she was expecting a white girl. In fact, I'd seen a cast list, obviously, and I was expecting um, Emma Amos to turn up. I, I'm thinking, you know, speculating on who it's Emma going to be. Emma Amos is a white actress. And, and she's the lady with a scar on right, her face. Right. I knew she was roughly the right age. I didn't know Marianne. I'd seen the name, but I'd... I'd couldn't put a face to it. She didn't know me either, so she didn't know if I was the person she was looking for, actually. But, but on the set, size. just, just to, to clarify that, on the set, that's to say when we shot the film, by that time, that was quite a long time after what... what no, so they met described. each other the first time on the That was just the, yeah. that was the preparation, the rehearsal. Right, right. And obviously by the time you get to shoot it, it's very thoroughly rehearsed yeah. and very precise. But what you love and what you're looking for is authenticity and reality and Real the life. most powerful emotion that you can get. Absolutely. Right? Before I show a clip here, tell me who Roxanne is. Roxanne is Cynthia's other daughter, Cynthia's uh, daughter that she lives with, um, whom, who's played young... Played by Claire Rushbrook. Played by Claire Rushbrook. Um, and, of course, that's her white daughter. That's, I guess that's important to say. And she, uh, she has actually grown up with, with Cynthia. You know, and right. they don't get on. Roll tape. Secrets and lies. Here it is. Wow, if you don't, this is powerful. Very good. I now mean, know why. Um, you 
have this reputation for being, as someone said, unforgiving about the upper middle class and treating middle class and with loving forgiveness. Is there something about a s sector of humanity that you want to focus no. on? I would say is that it? that is all rubbish, basically. Rubbish. And I don't have these kind of prejudices at all. I do think that... Well, you've um, read them, that they say that about you. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> I don't deny that they say it. Right, but it's, okay. it it's, it's, I mean, I can't even discuss it. It's not it. an idea so, you haven't heard before. It's so silly, I can't right. discuss it. I mean, the truth is that people are people, and indeed that's what this film is saying. Of course, there are people who behave appallingly, and sometimes, uh, you know, we, we show this in high hopes, there are people who behave appallingly, and the fact that they do is related to their privilege or their wealth or their... Yeah, and, and the arrogance comes from those things. But I don't, I do not have the, the, these kind of blanket prejudices about any kind of people. No economic class type thing. No, I mean, not at all. Yeah. What, what's different about working for Mike Lee? I mean, you've worked, you've been... Well, it's just the depths that you, you, you go to as an actor to create something very real. And because it is all organic, I mean, a sense of achievement at the end of the day is fantastic. It, you, it cannot compare with interpreting a script. It cannot. And in fact, it informs every other kind of work I do, having worked with him. But I don't know of anybody else that works like he does. Do you? Not in that depth. No, I don't. There are other people who um, use the improv improvisational methods, yeah. but not to the extent that Mike Lee does. Well, you no, no, couldn't, no. and I know you, you get tired of talking about your style and the way you, your process, but you couldn't work it any other way. I mean, you couldn't do it in the traditional way of let's look at a script, let's write a script, and let's give the actors a script, and let's choose the right actor, and let's come together for a reading, and, and let's see where good. we're going. It, it wouldn't, wouldn't be, be as good. good. Then my question is, why don't more people work like you do? Well, I, I used That's to... a good question, isn't it, Brenda? They don't know how to. You know? That's why. <laughs> they don't know how to. They, they don't know how to do what he does. <laughs> I mean, I used to go around saying, you know, everyone could do this. And then I gradually yeah. realized, for various reasons that I won't go into, to do with what some other people did, that that probably isn't true. And I think the truth is that what I actually do is completely idiosyncratic and mad, really. <laughs> and uh, if they say probably accurate. If Brenda says only I can do it, that's because nobody's as mad as me, really. Yeah, it was probably a little bit. There's probably some truth in that. I'd go along with that. Yeah, you, you would? I'd go along with yeah, that. Yeah, I would too. It's probably a little bit. I mean, it looks a little mad, doesn't yes. it? Mad as a March hair, as we say. <laughs> uh, Roxanne's 21st birthday party. Crucial mm. to this film. Very. Because? It's her birthday and they're all celebrating it. Now. And it brings all the characters together. It brings everyone together. Yeah. The uh, family is there. Mm -hmm. You know, the outsider comes in. That's right. What do you want me to give away the plot? No, I don't <laughs> want to do that. I'm, I, I'm trying to dance around that so that we don't do that. Um, will this change anything for you? This film and its a success and its approval and its distribution. Well, I mean, if anything changes, it can only be for the good, as far as I'm concerned, really. And, I mean, you Meaning know, you're not happy with the way things are, or...? No. Uh, no, I merely mean that, you know, I, I, I don't and, uh, and have never made films uh, that... To make that a lot of money? To, no. Uh, I've never made films that I want to languish in obscurity. Mm. I want films to be seen by... The f to be seen by as many people as possible and to be shared with audiences and the wider... The, you know, the more popular and the more successful the film is, the more that's going to happen. That's... This film started with an idea for you? It did. I mean, as we've said, there, there are lots of different things on the go. I mean, the one thing I did want to deal with is something to do with adoption. Because, uh, uh, the, uh, because? Because there are people that are close to me who have related experiences that I obviously can't talk about. And I wanted to... I'm not directly involved myself, but there are people who do have such experiences. And I wanted to... Um, to deal with it in a fictional film. Secrets and Lies by Mike Lee, Brenda Blethyn, and Marianne Jean-Baptiste. Baptiste. 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 Yeah. Baptiste. Uh, thank you very much. It's a thank pleasure you. to meet both of you. It's a, it's a, a very good film. And thank interesting, you. and it has uh, your unique and individual stamp. Did it There's make a, you laugh? Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, it's also made me... It, you look at those portrayal, these performances, and... You laughed I mean, and cried? Yeah. Good. 
there's also the world according to Mike Lee, which is a book, which you're, you're not necessarily promoting, but it's there if you know more about this different filmmaker. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.